Hey everyone, it's your girl Azay, and today I am talking about things I don't do in order to grow my hair waist length. But before I hop right into the video, I'm going to tell you to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification because let's be honest, you're going to want to see more of us. Please check out the breakdown of my simple and easy 4C natural hair care routine that grew my hair waist length so if you want a simple and easy alternative to all of the stuff that we see in the natural hair community today that's kind of complicated and involves buying whole lines in order to see results and you know maybe has like too many steps in order for you to fit into your life if you want to see that check that out it's linked below in the description box and it's also tagged up here also this is the uh, a continuation of our let's get back to the basic series which we began on just for black girls and we're bringing here to you all on youtube because it's important that everyone regardless of their class or income has methods and resources that make them feel well taken care of that and that they don't have to break the bank for or honestly step outside of what they're used to in order to feel so well taken care of so if you want to get more of a taste of that continue to watch this video watch the video beforehand and stay tuned now i'm going to let you hop right into the video first step is decreasing the use of combs and brushes period combs and brushes lead to unnecessary shedding and breakage that literally ruins all the progress that you made in the previous year of your hair growing hair grows maximally and probably some people's hair probably some people's hair probably grows quicker than this but in my research and in my experience hair grows half of an inch a month max in a year you can grow up to six inches of hair and that's another thing too some people think that their issue is their hair not growing when in reality it's retention retention is probably the most it's growth like doing what you're doing what you need to do in order for your hair to grow maximally and length retention are hand in hand they're not separate if you really want your hair to grow past what maybe you're used to or if you want your hair to grow as long as possible like you have to know how to retain your hair and eliminating combs and brushes is key because when you're using a comb or a brush you're not feeling like or the comb doesn't feel how rough you're being on your hair you're just trying to get out that knot or you're just trying to you know make your hair make the comb go through your hair like butter when in reality that's not necessarily what natural hair is for and of course you you can refer to those aesthetic videos where people have the dimming brushes or the split brush and they're running through their natural hair and that's fine that's great however your fingers like you're going to be able to tell like oh this is how i'm usually handling my hair let me be more gentle you can still get out those knots and still get out you know make sure make your hair so that you can run your fingers through it without using an external product because i guarantee you that once you switch to finger detangling you're going to retain much more length your hair is also going to thicken and that's going to lead you to, to the results that you want the second thing that i don't do is let anybody in my hair anyone who's ever known me knows that i outside of my mom and more most recently sierra are the only people who has been in my head i don't play that you know why because a lot of people don't care about the health of your hair you go to these cosmetologists licensed or unlicensed because some of the best you know hairstyles i've gotten have been from unlicensed um cosmetologists so it's not necessarily about their education it's about whether they care or not because i've also been to licensed cosmetologists who have ripped my hair 
who have just broken like I would look at the floor and the floor would be just covered in like in, in my hair like I would be wondering if I have any bald spots because that's how much hair would be on the floor and I'm just saying this to say like it's quite convenient to you know it it's it's easy to think that it'll be more convenient to go somewhere else or to go to someone to get your hair done when in reality it can actually cost you because that person may not care for your hair they may be using products that don't agree with your hair they may be slipping in products that can damage your hair and this is not to put fear in you if you have someone who you trust with your hair and that that's working for you then great but if you have a history of going to get your hair done at different salons and for whatever reason your hair ends up shorter every single time and you're going to different people and your hair still ends up being shorter maybe it's time to like let that go and start putting more time into doing your own hair and I know like what that may seem like you know we love the box braids we love the uh locks we love the um twists and all of those things but sometimes it's okay to let your hair breathe like even if you decrease the amount of time that you let people in your hair I know that that will breed results because hair loves to be left alone and I also mentioned that in that previous video you should definitely go check that out because I really do run through like my routine that grew my hair waist length my simple and easy routine that grew my hair waist length so go check that out but hair loves to be left alone and to be low manipulated so even if you cut your hair cut i mean cut your hair cut the amount of times you go and get your hair done to like i mean like in like uh like braids or protective styles done by like other people or and or it can be blow drying or straightening or whatever if you cut that down to maybe like if you're someone who does it like i don't know multiple times a month maybe if you cut it down to once a month or if you're a person who does it maybe like at the beginning of each season if you cut it down to twice a year and you pour more time into doing your own hair i know that that's a great way that can definitely help you everyone everyone does not have the intention for you to have healthy strong long hair and that's just a fact it's been anecdotally proven over and over and over again you won't regret learning how to do your own hair and style your own hair you'll save money you'll save time once you get into the swing of it and you will see your hair you will see your hair growing and you will see yourself retaining length but the third thing that i don't do is and i mentioned this in the last one i don't change my hairstyle often i don't change my hairstyle often because hair loves to be left alone i swear in a previous video i mentioned it i like to think of hair as like a plant in order for your plant to grow and thrive they need the right amount of sunlight the right amount of water and the right amount of nutrients in order to grow and thrive and you need those things on a consistent basis right similarly my holy my my holy grail of natural hair is your hair needs moisture your hair needs nutrients and your hair needs to be left alone your hair needs to be left alone and like i said your hair needs these things on a consistent basis i like to moisturize my hair braid it up in braids tie it up in a head wrap for a week or two and then take my hair out wear my hair out and braid out for however long i want to whatever feels right to me at the time once it starts to get dry or i start to see that it needs some tlc i re-moisturize it and start that process all over again because it's important to give your hair consistent like those three things consistently and that is a way to do it another thing that i don't do under any circumstance unless it's a very rare special occasion and i'm mentally prepared to deal with the aftermath is use gel on my hair i don't use gel i don't use gel for several reasons the first reason is that it does absolutely nothing for my hair it doesn't do anything for in terms of definition it doesn't do anything in terms of holding my edges down it doesn't do anything in terms of styling it doesn't do anything that i cannot achieve with my big three which is warm water conditioner and oil olive oil not only does it not do anything that i can't do without my big three but it also 
exponentially increases the amount of buildup that your hair follicles and your scalp will accumulate over time just because you used the gel. My hair and scalp stays a million and one times cleaner than it would if I were to use gel and longer. It stays cleaner for longer than it would if I were to use gel. So I don't, there's nothing that can convince me to use gel or begin using gel. It actually stifles hair growth because if you're using like gel in large quantities, it means your hair is getting dirty quick. Your hair is getting dirty quicker, meaning you're washing your hair more often. That's higher manipulation. Higher manipulation often leads to more breakage. You see where I'm going here. Like it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't help promote your hair growth journey and it doesn't really help with styling or making your hair beautiful or defined so why use it and that also goes for edge control why do you want your edge con your edges to look 3a when your hair is 4c i get it it's beautiful it's pretty you know if that's your style and that works for you that's great but for me like i said like it doesn't matter if i'm using it just on the perimeter of my hair if i'm using it throughout my whole head it is unnecessary i don't feel the need to have big old you know swoops and stuff in order to feel like my hair looks nice like i just feel like that can kind of be like almost counterproductive like the natural hair movement is to you know embrace your natural hair and stuff like that then why try to manipulate your hair to mimic the texture of a different hair type it doesn't really work for me and i don't do it but if it works for you that's great it's, it's pretty like i love seeing you know the different things that people do with their edges i think it's cool but i also think that that leads to people doing harmful things to their hair like perming their edges or straightening their edges every day i just stay away from it because it helps me achieve the results that i want the fifth thing that I don't do is buy a ton of store-bought products. Like the only hair care products that I buy from the store that I use in my hair is my conditioner and shampoo. That's it. There's no other reason to buy from these mainstream brands because often times they're sold off in to people who don't have our our meaning people with 4C hair people with natural hair people who are the largest uh consumer base for these natural hair care products like they're often sold to the highest bidder and to people who don't really have our best interest at heart and then we often see how those same natural hair care products that were supposed to be natural and not have anything harmful in them you know we're getting these news articles and these email updates saying that oh yeah well the formula has changed and now those natural hair care products that were supposed to be healthy and safe for us to use are no longer healthy or safe for us to use and so it's just and it's happened too many times to too many different natural hair care lines for me or anyone else to overlook like honestly you're better off decreasing the amount of store-bought products that you buy because you're going to save money first and foremost I mean, why do you need to spend $22 for a leave-in conditioner when you can get an $8 bottle of conditioner and maybe a, you know, $7 or $8 bottle of olive oil and the water that you already pay for at home and create your own leave-in conditioner that would not only will yield you more leave-in conditioner than you would have bought from the store, but will also do a better job at moisturizing your hair and there's just less questions involved about what's actually inside of the product that you made so that's my thing and how that helps me grow my hair is because when you simplify your routine period and when you also simplify the or decrease the amount of products you're using on your hair you're going to quickly catch on to what works for you. And once you find out what works for you, you can just continue doing that. And your hair will appreciate that because call back to earlier, I like to think of hair as a plant and all the plant needs to grow and thrive and produce fruit is to, to consistently receive the things that they need. So if you figure out what works for you and leave these 
natural hair care product lines like alone and kind of like just take a little bit of time to making stuff that you are more familiar with or that you're more comfortable with and there's less questions about like what's in it and what it's going to do to your hair and how it's going to affect your physical health that will aid in you growing your hair um healthier and stronger so there's that and here's a bonus the bonus tip is pretty much like tuning out and not listening to the things that people say doesn't work doing what works for you will never be something to be ashamed of or something to shy away from which is i mean let's keep it on i i use a mayonnaise based protein treatment if you haven't already seen the video um, i am a person who oh you know don't put food on your hair i put food on my hair and it works like any person who i recommend that makes to experiences hair like extreme hair growth hair strengthening hair elasticity hair uh thinking and all of those things and in the midst of a lot of people even saying to not use oils or butters on your hair i mean okay like i get it some people may think that using food on your hair mayonnaise and such like that on your hair is weird or don't don't use food on your hair there's alternatives okay i get that but for there to like be people saying that you shouldn't use oils or butters on your hair is just completely i mean really it's literally mind-boggling to even know that someone or people in the natural hair community are advocating for people to not use oils i just don't get it and obviously for myself and for hundreds of thousands of other people in the community oil is and, and butters are holy grail like staple items that you need in your natural hair care journey so i say all that to say stay in your own lane like stay in what works for you and what you're comfortable with because there's always going to be someone else who can look into your life with their lenses and think that you're doing something wrong but you don't have to feel that way keeping out people's opinions can just greatly help you on your natural hair care journey because it'll help you to stick to what works for you and what healthily safely <laughs> works for you and get you those results quicker because you need to provide your hair with consistent with consistent um moisture nutrients and being left the f alone in order for you to see those results and not switching up your routine or stopping doing something that you know has worked for you and will continue working for you just because someone said so will get you those results that you see quicker those are all of my tips that i have for today and of course if you like what you see don't hesitate to like comment subscribe and hit that bell notification because let's be honest you're going to want to see more of us may your natural hair journey be blessed with ease and results bye